When I thought about this topic, especially rounding with our staff nurses, I know how difficult it is to correctly distinguish between pr the pressure versus moisture in that perineum, sacral coccyx, buttock, ischium areas. Um, so I hope by the end of this lecture today that you're more comfortable with the, with the identification of the, whether it's moisture or, 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 or pressure. Um, and at the end, we're going to do some polling, you know, hand, raise our hands and is it, looking at different pictures to see if you really got the concept, okay? Uh, here we go. So I have no disclosures. So it's my hope that by the end of this time together that you'll have that confidence that you can identify those injuries in, in whether it's a moisture or pressure area. Here are my objectives. We'll start off with healthy skin, then move into injured skin. We'll go over some strategies for prevention and some treatment options. We'll review the staging of pressure injuries. And finally, we'll look at a lot of pictures. So I hope you're not squeamish. <laughs> So, as the body's largest organ, intact skin is the body's first defense against organisms and bacterial invasion, and is an important part of the immune system. The skin provides for sensation, touch, pain, temperature, and pressure. It also helps to regulate homeostasis of the body through the circulating blood, and actually the dermis layer receives one-third of the circulating volume, and it prevents excess loss of law uh, or absorption of water. Normal barrier function of the skin is dependent on intact corneocytes found in the stratum corneum. And these are like the bricks. And lipids, which filled in the holes between the corneocytes, are like the mortar in a brick wall. This helps with maintaining the skin's moisture barrier. The barrier serves internal homeostasis by preventing fluid and electrolyte loss. It also protects the body from absorbing water and potential irritants from outside environment. When the barrier is compromised, that transepidermal water loss rises. To guard against pathogens, the skin has an acid mantle, which is normally 4 to 6.5. This protects the skin from virulent and coliform bacteria, but yet allows its host organisms, which happens to be bacteria, virus, and fungi, to stay constant in a healthy bio microbiome. For good skin integrity, there has to be a balance of moisture within the skin structure and healthy bacteria. <clears throat> to protect the healthy skin barrier, you need to be careful how vigorous the skin is cleaned so we don't strip away the lipid layer the ceramides make up 75% of the lipids in our skin. Many hospital systems have gone with bath wipes that are gentle, pH-friendly, and are impregnated with aloe, which helps to moisturize the skin and replace the moisture. And some of the higher hospital higher-end moisturizers have dimethicone and ceramides, and these will hold the moisture within the skin. So when you pick up your hospital or any lotion, look at the back of the ingredients. And so if the first two ingredients are, is, has water in it, then it's really not enough. You're going to have to apply that four to six times a day to get adequate um, coverage. So why are we concerned with maintaining healthy skin? Because if your patient is incontinent, then something like this could actually happen. Skin becomes eroded from the erosiveness of the stool and urine, especially when in contact for an extended length of time. Moisture-associated skin damage is a term used for dermatological conditions in which the integrity of the skin is compromised due to the prolonged exposure to moisture. It's also known as diaper rash, irritant dermatitis, moisture lesions. It is an intense persistent symptoms that are experienced like burning, itching, over, um, and itching. Overhydrated skin affects the skin barrier, allowing common pathogens like Canada and Staphylococcus to enter, causing secondary infections. Moisture-associated skin damage is defined as inflammation and erosion of the skin caused by prolonged exposure to various sources of moisture, such as urine or stool, perspiration, wound drainage, mucus, saliva. 
When skin becomes exposed to excess of moisture and becomes overhydrated, it softens, swells, looks wrinkled. Do you remember how many times you stay in a bathtub or in a pool and your fingers get out and they're all wrinkled? Overhydration. And when it's overhydrated, it's more susceptible to friction and damage. It loses the ability to, stre to, dis to stretch or distort. Incontinence is one form of moisture-associated skin damage. <clears throat> What is believed through literature is that there are factors that intensify the moisture damage. Chemical composition of the fluid can be corrosive. Friction over moist skin, will t whether it's skin folds, um, linens, underpads, clothing, can be a problem. With a bariatric population, the skin changes in its ability to handle heat and the pH becomes more alkaline, especially within the skin folds. Once that pH changes, microorganisms become more active. When we look at the skin, it represents a barrier. This barrier is essential to protect the skin. Several factors that influence this barrier include age, obesity, and allergic hypersensitivities. Remember I mentioned earlier that once skin becomes overhydrated, it's more prone to friction and damage? I'll keep mentioning this throughout the lecture. So incontinence-associated derm oh, <laughs> incontinence dermatitis is more specific than the other moisture issues. It represents disruption to the normal barrier function of the skin, which triggers inflammation, which is predominantly a chemical irritation caused by urine and or stool um, coming in direct contact with the skin. Maceration makes the skin more prone to friction and shear injury. This is especially seen in the older generation and with fragile skin, it often occurs when transferring from bed to chair or sliding up and down the bed itself. And it's all about location. So incontinence-associated dermatitis can extend from the buttocks into the perineum, groins, skin folds, between the butt cheeks, down the inner thighs, and it can appear as a diffuse area of redness. And that redness will blanch. So when you touch it and release, it'll be white then red again. Sometimes you'll see scaling of the skin with papule and vesicle formation. These may open and weep. They're going to be shallow, superficial, partial thickness. Edges are going to be irregular. You may also see edema, maceration, weeping, um, flaking of the scale, flaking or scaling of the edges. Remember, if the skin is open and weeping, the wound is shallow and partial thickness, and it's going to be painful. Ouch, can I say that? Yeah. So with incontinence-associated dermatitis, there could be complications. Most concerning are bacterial or fungal infections, pressure injuries, and or severe pain. If that um, dermatitis is left untreated. Fungal infections are characterized by red rash with irregular border, many times the epidermal scaling. And, and you can see in this picture how bright red that rash is. And it's irregular along the edges. You know, let's see if I got this right here. See, irregular there. And there's a mirror image on both sides. That's pretty characteristic of, of a moisture problem. <clears throat> so what happens with the aging population and the skin barrier? With aging, our skin becomes drier, thinner, less elastic because we have less lipid production and a thinning adipose layer and there's a decrease in perfusion. Skin pH rises with aging, thus compromising skin health and the barrier function, partly due to reduced activity of the suspicious and sweat glands that normally moisturize the skin. Epidermis and dermis lose the ability to be attached as the epidermis thins. Um, therefore, friction on moist skin causes tears more easily. We see this with vigorous rubbing during cleansing of the perineal area or when the skin rubs against incontinence products, um, garments, bed, or chair surfaces. And keep in mind that overhydrated skin is more vulnerable to skin damage from friction than dry skin. With aging, 
Bladder emptying is less effective due to a decrease in bladder stretchiness. So we know that the combination of the physical changes in bladder function and skin changes, medical comorbidities experienced during aging, and mobility problems that can come with aging can lead to increased risk of incontinence and moisture-related skin damage. With skin damage, there is pain, potential infection. Focus on the physical aspects of incontinence has always been on the forefront. And we forget about the psychological aspects. It's embarrassing to lose control and show wetness through clothing. Many undergarments and adult briefs, pads are bulky. People withdraw from society. There's less interaction with people for fear of incontinence episodes. They don't want anyone to know that they are, they're wearing adult briefs. People with incontinence, especially the elderly, fear loss of independence and institutionalization. When the severity of that incontinence increases, the behaviors to conceal the problem escalate also. Thankfully, with baby boomers, there is more talk about incontinence and, uh, and products that are available. 